the congregation please stand. I am resurrection and I am life, says the Lord. Whoever has faith in me shall have life, even though he die. And everyone who has life and has committed himself to me in faith shall not die forever. As for me, I know that my Redeemer lives and that at the last he will stand upon the earth. After my awaking, he will raise me up and in my body I shall see God. I myself shall see, and my eyes behold him who is my friend and not a stranger. For none of us has life in himself, and none becomes his own master when he dies. For if we have life, we are alive in the Lord, and if we die, we die in the Lord. So then, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's possession. Happy from now on are those who die in the Lord. So it is, says the Spirit for they rest from their labors. Well, good morning. On behalf of the family, I'd like to welcome you all to St. Richard's Episcopal Church for this uh, memorial service. Uh, Everything you need to participate in the service with us is found in the order of service. Uh, Said service so many times. In the bulletin, uh, you can follow along with our service there. Uh, And directly after, I invite you all to the parish hall, which is just the big building right across uh, the sidewalk there for reception, uh, where you can greet the family uh, and be with one another there. So let us continue. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God of grace and glory, we remember before you this day our sister Marty. We thank you for giving her to us, her family and friends, to know and to love as a companion on our earthly pilgrimage. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us faith to see in death the gate of eternal life, so that in quiet confidence we may continue our course on earth until by your call we are reunited with those who have gone before. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. Amen. Please remain standing and sing together the hymn, the text of which you can find in your order of service. A reading from the Book of Lamentations. 
The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul that seeks him. It is good that one should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord, for the Lord will not reject forever. Although he causes grief, he will have compassion according to the abundance of his steadfast love, for he does not willingly afflict or grieve anyone. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us read Psalm 23 together. The Lord is my, my shepherd, shepherd, I shall, I shall not, not want. want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell dwell in the the house of the Lord forever. If you're reading the uh, bulletin, I'm not Kathy. A reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. We do not lose heart. Even though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day. For this slight momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all measure, because we look not at what can be seen, but at what cannot be seen. For what can be seen is temporary, but what cannot be seen is eternal. For we know that it is that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house, is, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this tent we groan, longing to be clothed with our heavenly dwelling. If needed, when we have taken it off, we will not be found naked. For those we are still, for while we are still in this tent, we groan under our burden, because we wish not to be unclothed, but to be further clothed, so that what is mortal may, may be swallowed up by life. He who has prepared us for this very thing is God, who has given us the Spirit as a guarantee. So we are always confident, even though we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Yes, we do have confidence, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So whether we are at home or away, we will make it our aim to please him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now please stand and let's sing together the hymn printed in your order of service. Thank you. 
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Christ. Jesus said to the people, Very truly I tell you, anyone who hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life and does not come under judgment, but has passed from death to life. Very truly I tell you, the hour is coming and is now here when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God, and those who hear will live. For just as the Father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son also to have life in himself, and he has given him authority to execute judgment, because he is the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Now I would like at this time to invite up Aaron Murphy to give remarks uh, from the lectern. The congregation may be seated. This is with love from Marty. Beauty is many different things. Beauty is in the mountains of Colorado or Tennessee. Beauty is in the Pacific Ocean or the Mediterranean or the Caribbean or the Gulf of Mexico or Lake Travis. Beauty is an art in a museum. It's in the ruts by the wagon trains a hundred years ago. Beauty is a stately tree and a delicate flower. Beauty is the smile on a child's face. Beauty is the gnarly hands of the elder. Beauty is the sunrise. Beauty is the sunset. I've been fortunate to experience all of these places and more. Marty Rosenfield, 2021. nothing that I could say would be as eloquent as the poem that we just heard, mostly because I'm a preacher and not a poet. <laughs> and, uh, but I do, actually I'm very grateful for those words. I knew that there would be a poem read, and I must confess, I didn't know, I knew the title, I knew it was called Beauty, I didn't know what would be in it. Um, but the context of that poem, the content of that poem, actually very much resonates with what I felt led to speak about today. Um, you know, when I was meeting with uh, Donna to plan the service, to talk through uh, all of the details, make sure we had the readings worked out and everything like that, and we were sitting in my office, and I shared with her that one of the holiest parts of what I get to do as a priest is not only get to come alongside people in these moments of their lives, but you get to learn about people. You get to hear their stories. And you learn very quickly that there is no such thing as a boring person. <laughs> There's only people that you don't know, right? Uh, and that is one of the holiest pieces of what I get to do, is hear those stories and learn those things. And certainly Marty was not a boring person. Now, I believe that we learn from other people, that we learn from the people who are in our lives, especially the people who we love. Now, saints are like this. Saints are people that we learn from. Now, saints aren't perfect people. You just read a biography of one of them, you learn that pretty quickly. No saint is a perfect person. But saints teach us and show us something about who God is and about the way that God desires for us to see the world. And when Donna was telling me about Marty and the things that she loved and that were most important to her, things that were reflected so beautifully in that poem, it occurred to me that this is exactly how Marty's witness works for us today, because of course Marty is a saint. Marty is a saint. 
Marty is the kind of person that I deem a great appreciator. A great appreciator. And what I mean by that is that Marty is the kind of person who appreciated deeply the wonder and mystery of the world around her. Whether it was the beauty of the natural world, spoken about, again, so eloquently in that poem, or uh, her curiosity and love of learning, or her love of antiques, the fact that she wrote poetry, right, the, that creative spirit, or just her interest in people, her genuine curiosity in people. She was someone who appreciated the world in which we live and saw it in a way that I would hope to see it. The people like this, people who are great appreciators, are so important especially in an age of distraction and overstimulation where every single thing seems to be uh, vying for our attention and taking our attention away from the things in our life which are most beautiful and most essential. People like Marty help root us and ground us in what truly is most important and most wondrous about the mystery of life to which God calls us. And so today, amidst our grief, amidst our sadness, and also, though, amidst our joy, we celebrate and give thanks for Marty, for her life lived among us. We give thanks for the beauty all around us that she helps us to see. Because, of course, what is most important and most essential about the life that we live are the people with whom we get to live it. The people in our lives whom we love and who teach us who we are and who we should be. They are who teach us what it means to truly appreciate the life that we live. And so today we do. We give thanks for Marty's life and witness and for the lessons not just that she taught us but that she is teaching us through the life that she lived and the words that she left us. Amen. And now I invite you, please, to stand with me as we say together the words of the Apostles' Creed, which are found printed in your bulletin. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated for the prayer. For our sister Marty, let us pray to our Lord Jesus Christ who said, I am the resurrection and I am the life. Lord, you consoled Martha and Mary in their distress. Draw near to us who mourn for Marty and dry the tears of those who weep. Hear us, Hear Lord. Lord. You wept at the grave of Lazarus, your friend. Comfort us in our sorrow. Hear, Hear us, Lord. Lord. You raised the dead to life. Give to our sister eternal life. Hear us, Lord. You promised paradise to the thief who repented. Bring our sister to the joys of heaven. Hear us, Lord. Our sister was washed in baptism and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Give her fellowship with all your saints. Hear us, Hear us Lord. She was nourished with your body and blood. Grant her a place at the table in your heavenly kingdom. Hear us, Hear us, Lord. Comfort us in our sorrows at the death of our sister. 
Let our faith be our consolation and eternal life our hope. Lord Jesus Christ, we commend to you our sister Marty, who is reborn by water and the spirit in holy baptism. Grant that her death may recall to us your victory over death and be an occasion for us to renew our trust in your Father's love. Give us, we pray, the faith to follow where you have led the way and where you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit to the ages of ages. Amen. Amen. And let us stand together for the hymn, My Heart is Resting, O My God. Give rest, O Christ, to your servant with your saints. Where sorrow and pain are no more, neither sighing, but life everlasting. You only are immortal, the creator and maker of mankind. And we are mortal, formed of the earth, and to earth shall we return. For so did you ordain when you created me, saying, You are dust, and to dust you shall return. All of us go down to the dust, yet even at the grave we make our song. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Give rest, O Christ, to your servant with your saints. Where sorrow and pain are no more, neither sighing, but life everlasting. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant Marty. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive her into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. Amen. And now the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon each of you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Now let's sing together one more hymn, Asleep in Jesus, which you could find on the last page of your order of service.
Now go in peace to love and serve the Lord.